At the South African Reserve Bank forecasts a mere 1% GDP growth in 2024. Treasury has been warning against continued spending amidst decreasing revenue, which limits its capacity to service the country's debt. Finance Minister Enoch Odongwana is due to reveal details in his medium-term budget speech tomorrow afternoon. Let's get the views of Business Unity South Africa CEO Kaz Kuvadia. Thank you so much, Mr. Kuvadia, for joining us on Newsnight. Um, so we we know that we need to reduce spending urgently. Cuts are an absolutely critical point on tomorrow's medium-term budget policy statement. Um, but that spending is the cuts are going to have to take place on non-essential and non-productive programs. Can you give us some details on, on what we should be looking for? Well, I think that our statement is saying that where we have vanity projects, uh, projects that don't add any value at the social level or an economic level. Uh, we need to actually cut back on those. We need to also improve our efficiency in the way we use money. The minister has said publicly that the cuts he expects to announce are less than the money sent back by many departments because they're not using the money and they're not using it efficiently. So what we are saying is that we should concentrate on those expenditure items that actually enable us to create an environment for investment and growth, because without investment and growth, we don't actually increase the pie to actually uh, begin to uh, allocate monies for necessary expenditure. Uh, and, and we need to ensure that whatever increases there are in the budget are kept to within inflation levels, because the moment we go beyond those, essentially what we're saying is that we're spending substantially more than what we've got. And, and uh, essentially, I don't think we should overanalyze it. So the bottom line is that expenditure has continued to go up since February's budget. Uh, the fiscal situation has become more constrained. Uh, our debt to GDP ratio uh, uh, was 70.9% uh, 70 uh, in the previous quarter. It's now at 72.7%. And so the debt GDP ratio has gone up. And, and we, with the exception of cutting expenditure, we don't have too many choices. I mean, the government can uh, increase debt to a certain extent, but we need to be extremely uh, careful about that because the cost of debt is going up, interest rates are going up. We are uh, sub-investment grade rated, so debt costs us more. And already the debt service costs are significantly the highest item in the budget. So we, we have a situation where we don't have too many choices. And so we're going to have to cut expenditure. We're going to have to manage our money far more effectively and efficiently. And then we need to start creating the structures and the processes to ensure that we deal with the underlying systemic issues that are inhibiting investment and growth. One of those issues that many people talk about is uh, policy certainty. Um, for foreign investors and for South African businesses, one of those critical items that often comes up is uh, ownership rights, especially where land is um, concerned. Do you think that's, that's still something uh, concerning many businesses? No, I don't think so. I, I think, you know, we had the, the debate around expropriation without compensation, so on. that debate died down. Uh, certainly from what we've seen and, and talking to investors, that hasn't been an issue. The issues are the, the underlying issues that are making it very difficult for businesses to operate and, and increasing the cost of doing business. And these include energy uh, is a big issue. Uh, our logistics and transport networks are a big issue because our ports, our rail systems are just not working efficiently and competitively. And then crime and corruption is a big issue because what's happening currently is that organized crime, uh, crime is actually impacting on the ability to do business and, and continues to increase the cost of doing business. So those are the three
critical issues. And then over and above that is uh, uh, not so much policy uncertainty as mixed messaging from government on policies. Uh, so if you took the energy issue before we actually started working with government on this, there was you know, one message coming from uh, 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 Minister Mantash. There was another message coming from the, the, the uh, Minister Godan. There were other messages coming from the management at ASCOM. And all of that just raises uncertainty and creates uh, a lack of confidence in, in investors. And so it, those sort of issues that needs to be addressed. I think since the appointment of the Minister of Electricity, the messaging on energy has improved significantly, and that's why we're making progress uh, between business and government on, on some of the energy issues. And so it's those sorts of issues that have been raised. And then, I mean, when we hosted a round table for, together with the American Chamber of Commerce for President Ramaphosa on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly, Another issue that was raised was the national health insurance. Now, that's a classic example of wanting to spend money that we don't have on something that at this point in time we don't need to. We, we don't need to spend two to three hundred billion rand a year on developing a national health insurance scheme. We have no problem with the, with the uh, national health insurance as a principle, but don't do it without the private sector, mm. crowd in the private sector, and that means the state has to use less money, and private sector and the state can work together toward universal health care. Now, we need to look very carefully at those sorts of uh, uh, projects and those sorts of initiatives, because the bottom line is that we don't have money for it, and it's not an effective use of the resources we have in the country. So, last question before I let you go. Um, if the South African Reserve Bank makes the right kind of decisions tomorrow, do you think we have the right kind of, kind of leadership to back up those decisions um, and, and implement the necessary reforms? Um, and if not, what would your message be to government to urge them to be that kind of leadership? Well, look, if the minister, and I think the minister has been messaging consistently, on the type of decision we expect him to make. So I think that he will make the decision that are appropriate for the current context. What we have said in our statement is that the minister's views and the decisions he makes tomorrow need to be backed up by the entire cabinet. You can't have the minister saying we have to curb expenditure and then some departments going public and say they can't do that. So under the leadership of President Ramaphosa, and the president in his State of the Nation address a couple of nights ago, or last night, uh, did indicate that uh, we need to cut back. We need to actually tighten our belts. So I think that with the support of the president, I think the rest of the cabinet needs to support that because there aren't too many other choices. And that's what we would expect. Well, thank you very much uh, for your insights. That was Business thank Unity SA CEO Kaz Kuvadia talking to us uh, in the lead up to the uh, Finance Minister's medium term budget speech taking place tomorrow afternoon.